there welcome back to my channel it is of course chelsea of she designs things and in today's video i'm going to be sharing with you some browser extensions that i use that should be kind of illegal <laughs> all right so if you want to know more about these browser extensions that i use as a web designer then stay tuned all right so let's go ahead and preface this by saying i use these browser extensions pretty much on the regular um, if I am in the starting phase of a project. Now you won't use them all the time so I will say this this video is definitely geared towards those of you who are interested in web design or web development so just keep that in mind. So the first browser extension that I'm using these are Chrome extensions just so we're clear I don't know if they run in other um, web browsers but they probably do but the very first one obviously is on the screen right now and that is what runs and it sounds exactly like the name says and exactly what it says right here discover what runs a website so basically if you want to know what platform a website is built on you can use this browser extension in order to see what platform a website is built on without having to go into the inspect or um, the web development modes inside of Chrome. So here is a great example of trying to figure out what runs my blog. We already know that it's built on the blogger platform, but you probably want to know like what programming language. So you would press the um, what runs <laughs> extension and that's going to show you the programming language. So it's built in Java and you could also see any additional things that I have on the blog. So for example, I'm using um, Mailer Lite here instead of my usual Flowdesk. So I kind of switch platforms um, just as a way to test. You can also see a number of other things on here. Now for a Google site, such as my own Google site, I'm pretty sure you guys are like, well, what will it show for a Google site? Because I was so curious as to what a Google site would show up as too. So whenever I select a Google site, I'm going to select what runs and it's going to show up as a widget. <laughs> And I found this to be so surprising that it says Google Plus. And I was like, what? <laughs> I had to take a moment. I was like, wait, what? Google Plus. And I was like, let's see. Let's find out. Because those of you unfamiliar, Google Plus doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> it's just, it doesn't exist anymore. So what has Google done with that? Well, this apparently is what Google has done with it. Instead of it being that usual social networking website that it has created uh, in the past, it just seems that it's now a part of your Google site. And I, I, I don't know, maybe it's just my Google site, so I'll have to check out some other ones, but I did find that to be quite interesting. The next browser extension that I use is called Time Camp. I use Time Camp as a way for me to kind of keep track of my clients and the amount of time that I spend on a project. Now, I do have a general um, base price for all of my projects and I usually quote my clients based on that base price and plus whatever the additional pages will cost. But that still associates to a time for me and the time is money. And so I do clock in and clock out of my client projects. And the reason I do this is so that I can understand and make sure that I am pricing my web designs and my client projects appropriately for the amount of time that I am working. Sometimes you'll find that you have a project that you have spent, say, 40 hours on and say you've spent 40 hours on this project and you quoted said client, um, I don't wanna say, I'm gonna give you a, a rough example, a $500, <laughs> just bare, bare minimum website, $500 and that was it. But you've spent 40 hours on this project. Now, you have to factor in the fact that you spent five, 500, you're only getting paid $500 but how much of that money is actually going to be in your pocket versus taxes versus other little things that you're going to have to pay for if you are a full-time freelancer. So I like to make sure that I am not going to be shooting myself in the foot and make sure that I am tracking all of my client projects. And so every year I'll make an adjustment um, just based on the 
total time that I have spent working on client projects. And then sometimes I have clients that need more, they want more um, hands-on approach. And then I have clients that kind of want to be more involved. So they want to have more meetings and they want to talk more. Um, and so for those clients, when I'm in client calls, I track the calls too. Those are, those are hours that I'm not spent on your project, but hours that you are taking away from me <laughs> doing the design. So keep that in mind as well. This also runs not only inside of as like a browser extension, whenever you have it inside of Gmail, if you get an email from a client, you can actually click start timer in Gmail to start the timer for that project. So this next extension, oh my goodness, is called CSS Peeper. And I do use CSS Peeper all the time, all the time. I'm not even gonna lie, I use it all the time. If I can't think of a beautiful color palette, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna use CSS Peeper if I find a site that looks really cool. So I am going to use an example site right now that is going to be my aesthetically dope website here, which is my personal brand. Obviously, I say this all the time, my personal brand and my business brand are very, very in opposite end of the spectrums for one another. Um, <laughs> you know, I have no filter on my personal brand, whereas I am definitely more clean line and angular and all that kind of stuff with my business brand. So my personal brand is definitely where I get to, you know, cut up and act a fool. So it, this, you see this design and you're like, oh, I really like it. But what colors am I using on this site? You can simply just, um, use the show me the style so it looks like a p and it's going to pop up the site and you can buy them a coffee you know if you enjoy using them same with me if you enjoy the service i provide you you want to do the same thing they'll show you the headings for their um for the fonts and the body so if if the site is built correctly this information will be accurate. If it is not, this information probably won't be accurate. But anyways, we'll say the colors. These are the color palettes that I have for my site. Yes, 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 all of these are correct. Um, and then for some reason, these are kind of the colors that you'll see that are um, associated with the site. They're just the, uh, what do you call that? There's a name for it. It eludes me at the moment, but if I remember, I'll say it back again. But these are the main colors that I'm using on the buttons. And so you will see these throughout my site. And then you can also go, and what I love about this is, let's say you want to um, see kind of like the spacing between elements on a page. Not only will it show you like the spacing, it'll give you the actual location right here instead of using the inspect tool whenever you're inside of... Um, your Chrome when you do the dev options. Now, it'll show you the color and it'll show you the font size, it'll show you the text that you're using, the typeface, um, the line height, obviously. So a whole bunch of information that, you know, you generally would have to go in and kind of go and search for. And it's just right there, it's already on the screen. Like, look at that, when you hover, Look at that, hover, 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 that's so cool. So I absolutely love this. It is my absolute favorite tool to use. I do use it, like I said, quite regularly. Um, and I love that it shows the spacing. So I'll always know when something is, you know, not really aligned correctly. I was, <laughs> remember I worked for um, a union and I am a union member. And so when I was kind of helping out with this project, I wasn't doing anything. They were just, I was just giving feedback on like what it is we needed, but I did notice like the lines were way off and it, it was like, okay, I'm not crazy. So then I used this extension and I was like, they really are off. And I sent them a screenshot just like this that showed them with the numbers that their spacing was completely wrong and whoever they had that was working on that project definitely needed to pay closer attention to that. Mind you, they didn't hire me for that. I was just a lowly administrative assistant, but look at me now. That's, that's not, I'm not bitter about it. I'm just saying. <laughs> but I digress. This is probably the best tool that I like to use. Um, you can also see the colors that I use on my own Google site here. Um, not the behind the scenes, but um, because if you tried to use this while you are in your uh, 
Google site like this, it kind of shows up a little bit, but it doesn't show up as well. So you see there's a color and then this is the background section. This is, and it shows you where the objects are. It shows you what the name of the object is. So just keep that in mind. This, this can be, <laughs> this can be hit or miss. It can also be really, really hit a lot of times. So I really like that. If you really wanted to know what something was called, um, Google's really good about this. This is awesome to me. And you can see here that I am using IBM Plex Mono, but I say what font I'm using. I tell you guys the font that I'm using all the time. It's not a surprise to me. I have no, no problem saying what font I'm using if you ever had a question. And you can kind of see the assets and you can see the color associated with this. This is so cool. So yeah, anywho, moving on to the very last extension that I use that I, I personally, I like to use several, but this is the very last one outside of the screenshot one that I've already done a video about. This one is a little bit different. All right, so the final browser extension that I don't really use too frequently, I should say, I use it enough to know a little bit about it is actually the Wayback Machine. And what's interesting is I am able to look at my site and go way back to its original owner because <laughs> believe it or not, she designs things or any website that you may have may have already existed at some point by somebody else. And if you don't, you know, keep your domain registered and you don't pay for it, it gets sold and it gets sold a number of times. And so I just found that to be so interesting. So here is, this site has gone back all the way to like two, let's see, 2013, 2013. There are 37 captures all the way to 2013. This is um, October, no, this capture right here that you see on the screen is actually from me. And this is using the Wayback extension. That will be the first iteration of She Designs Things, which is, there are actual images, but you don't see the images. But what you do see is in the corner, the cookies banner that everyone keeps asking about. But remember, Google does show the cookies information only when necessary. So for that reason, it's showing it in this corner because it deems it necessary. So it does say this site uses cookies from Google to deliver its services and to analyze traffic. Information about your use of this site is shared with Google. By using this site, you agree to its use of cookies. If you want, you can literally take this information, copy it, um, I'll try to leave it just so you'll have it. <laughs> We're just gonna copy it and leave it in my description so that you can add it to your own privacy policy pages that I'm always telling you that you need to have because I'm not kidding, you need to have it. And you also need to make sure that you're doing this, which you can see I do have, okay? Even from the very beginning, from Jump Street, okay? From the beginning. What do you see here? I don't have the image, it does not show up, but what does show up is the alt text information, which shows exactly what it is that should be there. And that is Chelsea Taylor of She Designs Things looking down at a mobile tablet while wearing round glasses. And if you know anything about my photos, you will know exactly what photo that is. <laughs> I know exactly what photo that is because um, I still have the original She Designs Things design. And then this very next one, Chelsea Taylor, she designs things, smiling while holding a tablet in an orange shirt and black hat, and so on and so forth. You can see here that I have, I do have my alt text inside of here. So, generally speaking, the images will show up when you use the Wayback Machine, but in lieu of places where you don't have the images, this is why the alt text is so, 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 so important and why I'm telling you Make sure you do it. I do it out of habit. I do it because as a professional photographer, it is something that I do um, as a part of my export process for my clients. <laughs> so whenever I'm doing a design, a web design, it's something that I know to do. And if you're actually, actually, if you're getting images from high quality sources, a lot of times those high quality sources already have alt text in it if it allows if it allows the um, program that you're, that it's 
upload it to to retain the original information so just keep that in mind as well so i do hope this video wow a little bit shorter um was very helpful for the helpful for those of you who are new to web design or web development. These are just some of the tools that you can use that are a part of being web designer, web developer. They are browser extensions. They do help more on the creative side, um, but they also show a little bit of, you know, things here and there. And if you are a web developer, this would be more of a full stack web developer. Um, I know developers who focus specifically on one particular uh, thing so they'll never have to really worry about looking here or looking there because they literally just focus on this part and then it goes to somebody else um yeah yeah that would never work for me total control freak gotta gotta have my hands in every god dang on thing <laughs> sorry all right again thanks so much for watching and of course see ya